After years of waiting, we're just weeks away from the release of The Batman. Over the course of my channel, I've reviewed a number of The Batman movies over the years, but I haven't reviewed all of the Batman movies. So leading up to the release of the Batman, I'm trying to go back and review each of the Batman films I haven't talked about in detail up to this point in time. First up is Batman 66, Batman the Movie. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your thoughts on Batman the Movie. Now I suspect that this is one of these films that your reaction to it is greatly determined by did you grow up watching Batman 66. If this is something you grew up with, you probably have very fond memories of it. Nice nostalgia for it. But if you grew up watching The Dark Knight, Batman Begins, and then you go back and rewatch Batman the movie or Batman 66 the TV show, it probably comes off a little bit strange to you. I personally grew up watching the old 1960s Batman show, and so I'd seen every single episode. I had Batman the movie on a VHS tape. I watched it all of it all of the time. It was a huge part of my childhood, so I do have tons and tons of nostalgia for this movie, as well as the TV show in general. And let's get started with just a little bit of background about the creation of this movie. Now, prior to the release of Batman 66, the TV show, there was talk of doing a movie that's theatrically released basically as a promotion for the TV show to get people interested in it. That's what they had done 15-ish years prior with the Superman series where they released Superman and the Mole Men into theaters, theatrically released film, but essentially it was just an extended version of the TV show they were about to release about Superman. And so that's what they wanted to do initially with Batman, but they crunched the numbers and decided it was probably best. Let's just launch the TV show and see what happens. Well, they put the TV show out there, Batmania exploded. It was an enormous hit right out of the gate and they decided let's go ahead and do this. Let's make a movie and let's strike while the iron is hot. So the script was written in 10 days. It was filmed over only 28 days and the movie released less than three months after it was shot and about two months after season one of the Batman series debuted. And so the turnaround on the creation of Batman the movie was lightning fast. I mean, it was really quick. It came out right between seasons one and two of the show. And that's what this movie is. It was kind of this tie-in thing trying to ride the wave of excitement and momentum related to the TV series that was so popular. And even in doing so, because it was so rushed, there was no time to kind of change things up. Even some of the cast had to change a little bit because they had already signed up to film movies during the break between seasons one and two. Catwoman being the most famous example of this, a different actress plays Catwoman in the movie versus season one of the TV show. And it, it came out and, um, Obviously, we're still talking about it to this day. So what do I think about the movie? Let's get started talking about the good. And right out of the gate, one of the best things about this movie is that it knows exactly what it is and what it's trying to do. It knows how silly it is. It knows how preposterous it is. So right out of the gate, the movie starts and there's a message from the producers about how this is designed to be pure escapism, just to put a big gigantic grin on your face. And from beginning to end, that's what it aims to do. It's silly, over the top, ridiculous fun. So the movie kicks off, you have Batman and Robin on a mission where they go out to try and rescue this yacht. Batman lowers down, oh, it disappears and a rubber shark is attached to his leg. And the sight of it in and of itself is so ridiculous because it's clearly just a rubber shark on his leg, biting his leg, and you can see how it's attached and he's punching it. And luckily, Batman has some shark repellent up in the helicopter. Hand me down the shark repellent bat spray. 
there's a, just a ludicrousness to every single detail about this, and then it just goes for it. That just makes for a fun film. And every 15 minutes, some new ridiculous thing happens. This was always the nature of the show, but they had a little bit more of a budget, and so it's grander in size with the shenanigans that are taking place. And even the nature of the writing where they're trying to solve all these riddles from the Riddler, and they're the worst riddles imaginable. The logic that they use to figure everything out is totally insane. And so if you're watching it, you just pause for a second and go, wait a minute, what did they just say? What? That was their explanation for what just happened? All of it is totally bonkers. Pretty fishy what happened to me on that ladder. You mean when there's a fish, there could be a penguin. But wait, it happened at sea. See? See for Catwoman. An exploding shark was pulling my leg. The Joker. And it's supposed to be. And so if you're watching it, as I did with my whole family, with the wife and the kids, it's just fun escapism. Especially like the kids are like, they're like, wait, that doesn't make any, and they're piecing together like how ridiculous this thing is. And there's, there's also a lot of really memorable little bits in here. In particular, Batman running around with a bomb. In the, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. And everywhere he goes, there's this marching band playing the same little tune. And stuff like that, it's entertaining. It You remember it years later. Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. It's good old-fashioned, innocent fun. And at times it even play, like leans into just the over-the-top soap opera melodrama where at the end of the film where he realizes what's been going on with Kitka and then it pauses to like zoom in on a Batman's face and it plays the Russian version of the Elvis song that they heard earlier during their romantic scene and it's like a tear goes down his face. It's just ludicrous. It's so silly. And that's what makes it a lot of fun. If this is something you grew up with. Um, Adam West, Burt Ward, they all lean into it so... They're just... They don't... They're having so much fun with the ridiculousness. Of course, all of the villains playing such over-the-top versions with such gleeful energy. There's something in catchy, contagious, and fun about all of it. At the same time, it's for people probably that grew up watching it. So let's, from there, let's move on to the mixed aspects of the film. And the big thing here is, as I've repeatedly mentioned in here, it's very much an acquired taste. This is something that if you grew up with, you probably have fun with it. If you just pop this on with no background, prior knowledge, it is an incredibly antiquated rendition of Batman. And, you know, it, there's some discussion where people don't, you know, did... Batman 66 pushed Batman into campiness. No, the comics were pretty silly at that point in time. And so the, the campiness of the show reflected what the comics kind of looked like. Um, but it's not the Batman that we know and love today. It's a very different version with Biff's baths and uh, visual onomatopoeia on screen, silly puns, over-the-top characters, ridiculous logic. It's all about being silly, having fun with the campiness, in which case, when so much of like The Dark Knight is complex ca characters, deep themes, layered storytelling, and then you have villains dehydrating politicians, it's they're categorically not really the same thing, like at all. They're not even in the same ballpark, in, in which case... It's difficult even to review amongst the other movies because it's so far detached and aiming for such a different target and a target that most Batman, Batman fans don't want anymore. So if you're interested in this target, if you grew up with this target, it's kind of fun. Otherwise, there's not much for you here. With that said, let's move on to the bad. And the big gigantic flaw here is I simply don't think this has enough to offer as a theatrically released movie to justify its existence as a theatrically released movie rather than just an extended episode or something like that. You watch it and it just feels like you're watching 
a slightly bigger version of what you could watch in the episodes. Now you got all your vi your primary main villains gathered together. They do get a few extra bat vehicles with the boat and the copter and everything like that. There's some bigger, wider shots because we have a boat, because we have a helicopter. But in general, you're just watching an extended episode of the TV show. I mean, as repeatedly stated before, it was shot between seasons one and two. It was written in 10 days and it was shot in 28 days. This, this was not a Batman film as we think about a Batman film. The Batman, the movie that's coming out here real shortly, um, it's been in pre-production and production since basically I started my YouTube channel almost six years ago. Uh, they, they all fall 2016 was all about Ben Affleck writing the script and he was going to write and direct it. And then all the stuff went down in five years ago, January of 2017, was when Ben Affleck was out. Shortly afterwards, they announced Matt Reeves was brought in. That was five years ago. So it took five years since Matt Reeves was hired for this movie, The Batman, to come out. Batman the movie was written in 10 days and shot in, shot in 28 days and released three months after that. Um, that. That's not even like part of one pass of the script for the Batman. So categorically... They're just so difficult to compare when this was like, man, people are loving the Batman. Let's get a movie out right now so we can make quick money. They did a fun version of that. It's nice to see all the villains together. It has all the goofy, campy energy that you want from this version of Batman. But at the exact same time, that's what it is. It's a quick cash grab because the show was a hit. There's uh, some other things in here that I don't think work all that great. One of the one of Adam West's prerequisites to do the Batman is he said, I want to be Bruce Wayne more. I want to show my face more. So there's this whole section in the middle of the movie where he goes on a date with Miss Kitka, Catwoman in the movie. And the movie's kind of moving, nice brisk pace, and we have some bat shenanigans with the bat shark, and then they get back, back their belts get stuck onto a buoy out in the water, and they're shooting torpedoes at them. So we have the action sequences. And then it just slows to a crawl when Bruce Wayne goes on a date with Miss Kitka. For the simple fact of the matter of, um, it's kind of supposed to be playing kind of romantic. It's, I mean, it's campy, it's supposed to be funny, but it's playing romantic. And all my days are trances, and all my nightly dreams are where thy dark eye glances. And when everything's designed to be superficial and over the top, I mean, they just have no chemistry because it's just two people playing so broad, so large, and trying to, like, manipulate each other and stuff like that, that it, 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 it rings hollow. You don't care about, you know, they have no chemistry. There's no anything between the two of them. You're just watching two people overact in mildly kind of romantic senses, sort of. And so it just, it just falls flat. And this kind of goes on for a little bit longer than you want it to go. And I can understand why Adam West wanted to play Bruce Wayne. And there's a lot you can do with Bruce Wayne. Watch the Christopher Nolan when there's tons of Bruce Wayne in there. But that's because they took it more seriously. And so Bruce Wayne was a character with a character arc. And having Bruce Wayne go on a kind of fake date with Catwoman pretending to be this other person. It's just not interesting, especially because the audience knows that it's Catwoman. So the whole time we're like, it, it, like seeing Bruce Wayne swoon over her, it's like, what, what, what are we kind of doing right now? So I kind of slowed to a crawl for a little bit there. Also, while there's Batman action in the beginning of it with the shark and the buoys and everything like that, there's a little bit of a fight with Bruce Wayne but we don't get, like, a, our first real good fight until 50 minutes into the movie. And Batman 66, these are known for the biff, bath, visual onomatopoeia, the cards appearing on the screen with the words as people are getting punched and things like that. And the first time that even starts to happen is 50 minutes in. But even it's pretty light compared to what you're expecting. So you don't really get the fight you want until the submarine at the very end of the film. In which case, even in trying to deliver the stuff that you want, it, it kind of takes its time to get there. 
Um, few other things, and this is a, a kind of a bit of an unfair nitpick, but uh, there, like, one of the infamous things about the show was that Cesar Romero, who played the Joker, had a mustache and he refused to shave it. And so they just painted over it. And one thing in the world uh, that's kind of... Some discussions happened over the last 10, 15 years since we started having Blu-ray is discussion of old movies and TV shows from like the 50s and 60s. Which ones look the best and the worst in HD? Because they, they weren't shot to be rewatched on these pristine HD TVs that we have. And therefore, when you take Cesar Romero and you put him on a Blu-ray and it's crystal clear, the little white paint over his mustache, it doesn't work. And like, it doesn't work at all. Maybe back in the, when you had crappy TVs in the 60s, you could get away with that. Not anymore. And so some things like that, it does add a little bit of a, a charm to like a different era of television and with storytelling when he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to shave. And they went for it. They just went along with that. It's kind of fun. At the same time, it's distracting. It's funny the first time you watch, you're just like, that is a mustache right there. Paint it over. And then you just keep noticing it. And likewise, you know, there's some stuff that it's kind of fun, like in the, the fight where, um, in the hideout where they're escaping. And there's a part where um, like a guy gets shot out of, out of the building on a springboard. And it's, it's fun when they cut to the shot of the, the body flying in the air because it's clearly a dummy. There's a lot of stuff like that that just, it plays very different when you can see it in HD and it's like, that is not a human. That's amusing in a whole different way because of that. And, and like some of this adds to the charm of it because it, it, because it is a silly show, having more things to laugh at helps. You are laughing at it rather than with it in the case of some of these things and what you could notice when you're watching the HD version. And honestly, it's a movie where you just don't really care about the plot at all. I mean, you have this whole thing about Commodore Schmidtlap and his yacht being kidnapped and he's being held captive somewhere. And then they're using that as a mechanism to be able to dehydrate all these people from the World Union Trade Organization, whatever it is, I don't know, remember what the name of the organization, to kidnap all of them, to create chaos. And there's like all these different plot points and everything kind of going on that you're trying to resolve, but you just care about the fact that it's fun to see Batman doing silly things and watching all these villains doing their over-the-top performances. It's the energy, it's the vibe, that's the hook. The plot itself, you do not care about it at all. It doesn't really hold up. Um, the riddles and things are insane. <laughs> it's just pure insanity. Um, and that's what you enjoy about it. The vibe, the energy, not so much the particulars. All right, real quick, before I give you my final thoughts on this one, be sure to join me down below in the comment section. What do you think about Batman 66? Is this one you grew up with or is it something that you watched later on and <laughs> I'd love to hear your take watching this one if you didn't grow up watching it. Also remember, I will be doing a bunch of these, more of these reviews, and I've already done a bunch of these Batman reviews. You can check those out right up here, and I will have a full array of Batman rankings once the movie comes out. Be on the lookout for all of that. In closing, as someone that grew up watching the old show as well as this movie, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. I can enjoy it for that reason, but I don't really look at this as a movie in the traditional sense. It's not good cinema in any traditional sense. It's not the sort of thing I naturally gravitate towards outside of just some nostalgia and wanting to share it with my kids, a piece of my, my childhood being shared with my children the same way that my mother shared Batman 66, something from her childhood with me. And so that's the way I perceive of it. I can have fun with it, but I don't think it's particularly all that great either even for what it's going for, they didn't exactly put a ton of time into trying to make this the best thing they, they could make it. They just did the best they could writing a script in 10 days. Overall, I'm gonna give it a C, but on the entertainment scale, I will give it a 6.5. If you didn't watch this one growing up, you can skip it. Otherwise, there's some nostalgic fun here. Basic idea, I can have some fun with it, but I really don't think it's a great movie in the general sense when I say a movie is good. You can check out my other Batman content all right over here. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.